darlings. This is Jen coming at you on my downtime. Hope you're all having a great day. Whee! It is freaking hot as hell in here. Seriously. Whew, I'm not kidding. It has been so incredibly humid in this entire state, probably the whole tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, that <coughs> none of us can breathe. Our allergies are freaking killing us. <coughs> And that's probably why my throat is all screwed up, too. I am doing this video as a response to my buddy, Tat Steege, and he shot this video entitled, Analyzing the YouTube slash Google Condition. Yes, um, there is a, there is a conditioning, um, how the hell do I explain this? There is a conditioning when it comes to the viewership on YouTube and as well as the users and the way that they portray themselves on YouTube I have noticed the uh, the change in not only the demographics that Google itself wants to uh, attract and uh, cater to but I've also noticed that a really nasty side effect of that is basically people compromising their ethics, their morals, their values, their personalities, who they truly are in order to get famous on YouTube. Okay, I think that is utter and complete bullshit. Alright? And you guys can go ahead and hate me all you want for saying that because I do know that what I'm saying against all of all the analytics, everything that's going on, probably does sound like bullcrap, but I honestly think that throwing away who you are as a person and what you believe in is bullcrap. I don't care what the statistics say, alright? That to me is bullcrap. By the way, cheers, mug of the day. I need my coffee too. Seriously. Anyway, Tats, I, I have to say big ups to you for being confident in yourself and actually mentioning your age on YouTube, you know, basically out in public, as it were, without any qualms. You say that you're 39 years of age and you believe that um, if you get, like, any kind of views on any of your videos, like, you feel lucky. Well, that's how most of us feel. Seriously. Um, that's how most of us feel. Most of us feel that, you know, by being ourselves and actually putting ourselves out there, we're not exactly... Uh, getting the the responses that we believe are due to us. And I think, you know, honestly, it doesn't really matter what we believe is due to us because obviously Google and YouTube have their own agenda. Um, if it weren't for that, I would say, yes, it does matter. Uh, it does matter, you know, what we do contribute to society in the YouTube community. Uh, yes, that does matter, and it always will matter. Despite, like I said, despite what the statistics say, despite the analytics, despite uh, the conditioning of YouTube and Google now as we know it. I mean, yes, back in 2006, everybody was all about being real, being themselves. They cursed on video, drank on video, smoked cigarettes on video. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, suddenly that became unpopular for goodness knows what reasons. Hmm. Hi. Mm. I'm going to have me a cigarette. But yeah. All those things suddenly became unpopular. Um, 2006 was also the era in which people would talk about theory a lot. Uh, they would do a lot of parodies. They would act. Uh, they would actually come out with original music, which I really appreciated. Um, whether they were just sitting there and playing on an acoustic guitar or they actually created their own music video. I appreciated that because not only was it authentic and genuine, but that's real artwork. You know, that's real artwork that needs to be exposed and seen. Um, and yeah, I, I do believe that, you know, this place has changed a lot, um, mainly due to the fact that uh, the vloggers I believe had changed it, directly or indirectly. And I say directly because uh, vloggers somehow wanted to garner more viewership just to be heard. You know, like you said, for the grassroots movement, like say, you know, say you're, you're standing for something, you're standing up for something that you really believe in. Mm. 
and you have no other way of getting that message out other than on a YouTube video and the popularity of that video. Also back then ratings counted too. Like if somebody like five starred your video you were like, oh my god, you know, you were at the height of your glory. We have no star system anymore. Yeah, that that's how old we are. <laughs> and that's bullshit. Back in 2008, no, actually no, 2007, I started from 2006. 2007, vlogging became so popular, everybody was all about it. Everybody was all about hearing each other's opinions, doing response videos. And this was way before, <clears throat> you know, all the trolls started to get so shy to the point where they became keyboard commandos, as we call them. You know, just uh, basically hiding behind sock channels without any videos, without any real content, just typing away at the keyboard and hating on you, doing all kinds of crap to your channel just because they could, because they got off on it. Um, so yeah, that, that's one of the, the dark sides of, you know, basically the vlogging community as it is on YouTube. And I think, you know, back in 2007, the vlogging part, or vlogging aspect of YouTube started to become more popular because people wanted to hear real opinions about real topics. Um, nowadays in 2012, yes I'm jumping, nowadays in 2012, people are too afraid too afraid to talk about anything that they are personally going through uh, and actually connecting with others um, over this website. Like, uh, say for example, you have an issue with insomnia or depression or anxiety. You're afraid to talk about that now on a vlog because a potential employer or current employer could see that and then, you know, obviously vote you out of, uh, out of their system, so to speak. Um, and honestly, that's against the law. They have no right to do that, but a lot of companies do do that. And yes, I wanted to bring that up because honestly, the YouTube community is not just about, um, you know, the talent and also about um, creativity. It's also about being genuine and being real. That's what YouTube had always been about ever since its creation. And um, I have to say, the, what I just said is my major complaint as far as the uh, current changes go. Um, I have a lot of, uh, I, I definitely have a lot of uh, grievance or grievances about <laughs> how uh, we're judged on this website just simply for being on it. Um, the funny thing is is that um, I just recently uh, spoke with a very inex uh, inexperienced YouTube user. Mm. Doesn't have a channel nothing like that, but likes to watch videos and all that other stuff. This person knows nothing about related videos. This person knows nothing about looking at specific things that we do, like screen names, um, times in which something was posted. So somebody could watch a video that you had done back in, say, 2007 and think that you had just done it yesterday. Um, <laughs> so, you know, unfortunately, people nowadays um, are watching you so much, which is good because you're getting uh, the due exposure that you would like, uh, but it's happening, people are judging you in all the wrong ways and you're getting the exposure for all the wrong reasons. Um, and when, when I'm talking about inexperienced YouTube users, I'm, I'm mainly um, referring directly to, you know, employers, potential employers, potential clients, uh, people that deal with you on a professional level. I think of Honestly, if anything, if you um, mention and you make it known that whatever channel you are vlogging from is solely your vlogging channel, they should be able to respect that logically. They should be able to respect that and the fact that it's your personal space. Now, should you actually come up with a professional channel and you're showcasing your work, uh, you're communicating with clients over that channel. That's a different story. That's a completely different story. And it, it makes me think, you know, now that like YouTube, YouTube has changed uh, on, a, on a level of communication so much that people tend to make snap judgments and have knee-jerk reactions. It makes me, you know, want to want to ask how far do we, we really need to go as far as um, explaining ourselves to people 
to the point where like they'll finally understand what is personal is personal, what is professional is professional, and that they are in fact separate. Um, drawing, drawing or creating boundaries is very hard, especially when you're on social media and the public and anybody can see you. Um, that does make things a bit hard, but hmm. What are you gonna do? I just went on a tangent. I almost lost my uh, I almost lost myself there. But anyway, I was talking about 2006 and 2007. Now in 2008, in the age of vlogging, vlogging had uh, basically been done for personal reasons, political reasons, business reasons. That's when the marketing industry really started to hit YouTube. I should know because that's when I joined YouTube. I come from a marketing background and I thought, well, this is the best place that I could try to connect with people, try to build networks so that I can build business. How freaking cool is that? Oh, and how quickly did that get shut down? I mean, really, mass advertising, spam. But I'm not complaining. I'm not, because I can understand from that viewpoint. Um, you know, maybe uh, putting out a message in such a way that you're selling something directly may be a little bit too harsh for uh, the untrained eye and ear. So, y you know, that's fine. That's understandable. It is what it is. So that's why I've just kind of dummied it down to vlogging, which. I'm happy I did. I'm very happy I did because I've met a lot of wonderful people on this website. Um, now you're saying about uh, the age range in which you fall in. Um, I take it as the age range in which I fall in as well because I am 30 years old. Thank you very much for the compliments in advance. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> I've been told that I look like I'm about 25 uh, a few times I've gotten 23, and I feel a scab that I want to pick so bad. I'm sorry, hang on. Just, I have dandruff, and I'm trying to, like, get rid of it, and it's a pain in my butt. Anyway, I'm 30 years old, and I know that I do not necessarily uh, fit the description of a certain demo demographic that is popular on this website as of today, as of 2012, but that's okay. I'm not sweating it because I know that I have something to offer. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to get up on here and be like, Mug of the day, they're on sale! Although I wish I could do that. That's okay, though. It is what it is. Mm. I still could. Anyway, that doesn't matter. But what I can offer people is my experience. My experience professionally, personally, like in my personal life. Um, advice that I could give to others via response videos, maybe just like responding and having a conversation and keeping the discussion going. I always thrive on that in itself, like building a thread out of videos. I love doing that. Like I have the whole, I have the whole uh, web 1.0 forum mindset as far as communication and discussions go. And um, <clears throat> that's like the 1990s right there. I really thrive on that. I do. Because that's when conversations start. And when conversations start, organization starts. And when organization starts, the effectiveness of getting something accomplish, accomplished is that much more. You see where I'm coming from? That's exactly one of the biggest reasons I'm still on this website, despite my age, despite the fact that I don't exactly fit into that whole... Um, I don't know, Silicon Valley kind of thing. I'm from New Jersey. What do you want? I don't care. Okay, I'm not here to fit into anybody's demographic. I'm here to be me. And this is one thing that I had to learn back in early 2009, is that mm, I cannot be everything to everybody. I tried it. Believe me, especially when I first came on this website and I was marketing myself. I tried to be everything to everybody, which is possible because you learn more about people. The more you learn about them, the more you can communicate with them effectively, and the more things get accomplished. Um, however, there are always going to be disagreements along the way. And if I'm going to be vlogging on this channel, some people are going to disagree with me, and that's okay. That's fine. I don't care. That's why I'm vlogging. <laughs> okay? 
Like I said, this is not my professional channel. I don't know how many videos I've said that in already, but yeah. Mm. I don't even know where I'm going with this. I really don't. I don't even know where I'm going with this video, other than I know it's taking a long time for me to actually do this one. But that's okay, because it's a vlog. It's not meant to be popular. It's meant to have uh, a discussion, to, to continue from a discussion, and to keep the discussion going. And I wanted to actually ask all of you that subscribe to me, and uh, that watch me, whether you subscribe me to me or not, if you happen to see this on Facebook, I want your, uh, I want your view, your opinion. Where do you think YouTube is going as far as vloggers go? And um, even more so specifically, where do you think it's going as far as building grassroots movements goes? You know, the effectiveness of communication. Also, what do you think, how do you think it's affecting business? How do you think it's affecting marketing? How do you think it affects people um, professionally and personally? Should there be a boundary? I think so. I think that, I, I do think there should be a boundary, but I think that boundary should be set. Um, I, I do think it should be set through creating separate channels. That's the reason I do it. That's the reason I create separate channels. Because this here, what I'm doing, is totally personal. On my other channel, all business. All business and nothing but. With a little bit of personality, because I can't help myself, but you know. Ah, oh, things are changing, Tad Stage, and uh, honestly, dude, it's crazy. But you know what? Go with it. Because I'm going to keep coming back to your videos. I'm going to keep watching you. I'm going to keep responding to you. And uh, hopefully we'll get a really awesome discussion rolling to a point where we have a lot of people in on it. That, that's something that I want. That's something that I want. is a sense of unity, a sense of, of structure, uh, organization, communication. You know, that, that very human but very intelligent sense of humanity. That's what I want to experience. Especially when I watch your channel, because you're always bringing up topics that bring out that side of me. And that's why I really appreciate you. Um, and also one of the biggest reasons why I want to meet you in person. I have told you that. I do want to meet you in person now that you're in the New York area. Uh, you know, you could catch a train, I could catch a train, we'll meet up somewhere in Manhattan, you know, maybe Greenwich Village or something, get a cup of coffee, have a discussion, you and me, seriously. That'd be awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I think it would also be great if, like, maybe we can, uh, start something new, start something fresh on YouTube that, uh, that we could get people involved in. Like, maybe... We could discuss that, and if we do, when we do, actually, when we do, it's going to kick some serious ass. Anyway, this is Jen coming at you on my downtime, and as usual, my darlings, I hope you're all having a great day. I certainly am, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <sighs> and I win.